Karakoto Katoa. And what a wonderful day this is. Lots of smiling faces because there have been several success stories. So Northbridge last night had its talent contest. Was it a contest or was it just a display of talent? A display. So everybody won. So there are people in this room who are part of that. Good morning, Julie. Good morning, Spencer. We're ready for fireworks. You're ready for fireworks. It's that day, isn't it? I hope we won't have any fireworks in church, but you know. For as we know, friends, and as we say often, this is the day that God has made. We We will will rejoice and be glad in it. And so let us bring our whole selves to find ourselves once more in the stories of faith. In this community, we will draw strength and offer love as we stand at the edge of God's call. Israel crosses the river Jordan. The Lord told Joshua, Beginning today, I will show the people that you are their leader, and they will know that I am helping you as I helped Moses. Now, tell the priests who are carrying the chest to go a little way into the river and stand there. Joshua spoke to the people, Come here! And listen to what the Lord your God said he will do. The Canaanites, the Hittites, the Hivites, the Perizzites, the Gigashites, the Amorites and the Jebusites control the land on the other side of the river. But the living God will be with you and will force them out of the land when you attack. And now God is going to prove that he's powerful enough to force them out. Just watch the sacred chest that belongs to the Lord, the ruler of the whole earth. As soon as the priests carrying the chest step into the Jordan, the water will stop flowing and pile up as if someone had built a dam across the river. And the Lord has also said that each of the twelve tribes should choose one man to represent it. The Israelites packed up and left camp. The priests carrying the chest walked out in front until they came to the river Jordan. The water in the river had risen over its banks, as it often does in springtime. But as soon as the feet of the priests touched the water, the river stopped flowing, and the water started piling up at the town of Adam near Zarethan. No water flowed towards the Dead Sea, and the priest stood in the middle of the dry riverbed near Jericho, while everyone else crossed over. That is the Old Testament reading set for today, and it has some quite difficult names in it. So I thought, well, let's have someone who's made all his mistakes in the studio many times read it. But also I think the pictures helped. So what did we hear today in that reading, I wonder? Joshua, you might remember, is the new leader. And God is going to help Joshua as God helped Moses. For 40 years, the people of Israel had been kicking around in the wilderness journeying together and experiencing hardship, often despairingly. And we might think, friends, that this is a reading for us. When we have known hard times and felt directionless, when we felt abandoned or rediscovered the sense that there is, after all, a purpose or power that we had lost sight of, Maybe we don't feel qualified for what we are doing. Or we assume that leadership and direction must result in the perfect completion of a cherished ideal. Some of Jin Suk's reflections have explored that illusion. Well, Moses was an unlikely leader, and his time of service to the people and for God did not mean that he would make it himself into the promised land. And that's true for us, 
Sometimes our goals are just for now and not necessarily the end points we imagine them to be. Life is surely the experience of rediscovering what matters in new and wondrous depth. We'll see this as a reading for us. If we remember being overwhelmed when we had to make a change, had to go somewhere new, job, relationship, business venture, a place, a new city, a new house, the start of a project or a challenging development in our soul work. Our minds were so full that, as it were, the waters had risen up around us and we could be washed away at any moment. That's how we felt. When times like this occur, it is only at the point that the priest in us, the part of us that is out front and ready to move, places a foot in the water, deliberately walks into the water, that God clears the way and the dry path is clear. Note that from the reading. God's help is assured, and yet it's the human stepping into the flow which is crucial. And these priests are of service. They carry the tablets of stone and the box of covenant. And it's symbolic that they take God with them. Everyone else crossed over. So what can we do for others in the transition times of life? What might we do for ourselves? What leadership will we recognise? We come to church. Hello, friends who are coming at the back. Hello, good morning. Good morning. We come to church. And we do other learning too. And we do that to get used to stepping into the flow so that God can activate the promise of being with us always. Today, in whatever we are carrying in the spiritual or priestly truth of ourselves, how do we take God with us? In the book of Joshua, the conquest of Canaan, that narrative about the killing and subjugation of the peoples who live there, does not make for easy reading. Not today. There are ways to get God off the hook, you know, by citing various verses or talking about God's grand plan for the world which justifies violence supported by God, I'm not going to go there. What I'm going to say is that we do not live in the world of an ancient tribal people that saw its relationship with God in terms of victory or defeat and partisanship. Indeed, the Hebrew Bible is not without critique in that regard. In our world, there are still tribes of so many kinds that annex God for the expression of their cause. God is used in often a military way. Onward Christian soldiers is one such example, that hymn that is used by armies. And there are churches that, well, the less said the better. All I know is that when I come to the edge of a transition, God does not meet me in the might of being right or in taking away the rights of others. It's my insecurity or feeling slighted or afraid that I'm not going to get my own way that makes it hard to see the God who does not play favourites. In Hertz, we so often go back to our early days and relive the past rather than be in the presence, present. We cannot see what is before us. The river of our destiny cannot be crossed just anywhere, as the Jordan could not be. I must move to the right place, which might even be where the seasonal waters are at their most threatening. I must discern and get to that right place, for there is God, as though waiting for me, to take the first step.
name. From the dust of the earth, the Holy One breathed us into life. Through the breath of God, we are all connected. Shaped in God's image, God formed us with a purpose to create, to serve, to tend, to protect, to love. That life may flourish in all its forms. May the Spirit of the living God be manifest in us. Now, in our lives together, may we gather at the river and think about why and where we'll cross. And as we think about that, we have some music to aid our reflection. Here's a poem that I learned at school, and maybe you did too. Who learned Tennyson's Crossing the Bar? People of a certain age, might I say. Maybe I was at the end of a tradition. So here are um, some verses for us to say together. Now I want you to watch this, and those of you who are very careful about grammar and punctuation, hands up. Do not think I have made a mistake with the punctuation on the final lines. It is quite interesting, so just keep an eye out. So together, friends, sunset and evening star, and one clear call for me, and may there be no moaning of the bar when I put out to sea. But such a tide as moving seems asleep, too full for sound and foam, when that which drew from out the boundless deep turns again home. Twilight and evening bell, and after that the dark, and may there be no sadness of farewell when I embark. For though from out our bourne of time and place the flood may bear me far, I hope to see my pilot face to face when I have crossed the bar. What does a pilot do? In this sense. Guides you. Leads the way. Guides you in. Guides you in? Yeah. Does the pilot guide you out as well? Mm. Yeah. Over the bar, yes, over the sandbar, that's right. Mm. To make sure that the vessel is safe. So the pilot is somebody who knows mm. that harbour intimately, has the knowledge, the local knowledge, yes. guides you in and guides you out. Yes. What do you think about the pilot in this poem? It's got a capital letter. Yes, there we go. It's good. All the language people, this is your this is your time. So why do you think the pilot has a capital letter? 
Possibly stands for God, that's right. I hope to see my pilot face to face when I have crossed the bar. Well, I was talking earlier about the fact that God is with us always. So what's going on in this poem, do you think? Let's read the poet's words. So Tennyson wrote this. The pilot has been on board all the while, but in the dark I have not seen him. That divine and unseen who is always guiding us. So that was Tennyson's answer. But you know, with poems, you read them as they strike you, and there might be other readings. Right, Karen is going to read another reading for us. Now, this one is from First Thessalonians. So, Karen, did you know that this is possibly the oldest book in the New Testament? No. People disagree. It might be the second oldest, but it's a lot older than the Gospels. Uh, just say before you begin. Listen out for Paul talking about the experience that he, Silas, and Timothy had of being with the church, being with the Thessalonians, this early church group, and they were there working around the clock. They were kind of moonlighting. They were preaching and they were doing manual labor as well to support themselves. And Paul talks about the word, which is not just the word of speaking, but is that word of God, which is active and working. And I think you can feel that coming through the reading, can't you? So um, Karen is going to read it in the style of a working man. Can you do that? <laughs> okay, Thessalonians chapter 2, verses 9 to 13. You remember our labour and toil, brothers and sisters. We work night and day so that we may not burden any of you while we proclaim to you the gospel of God. You are witnesses, and God also, how pure, upright, and blameless our conduct was toward you believers. As you know, we dealt with each one of you like a father with his children, urging and encouraging you, and pleading that you lead a life worthy of God, who calls you into his own kingdom and glory. We also constantly give thanks to God for this, that when you received the word of God that you heard from us, you accepted it not as a human word, but as what it really is, God's word, which is also at work if you be in you believers. Let us give thanks for the word of God. God's, God's word, word is, is working in us. us. If you would like to, please come forward in this time of silence and take a leaf and place in the river. Come forward and take the leaf and place in the river. So just like this. Have a thought of something that you would take with you as we go forward, or think maybe about something you would like to leave behind and let flow in the river. So just do that. Please do that.
Let's pray. Loving God, we sit in a group together with thoughts in our hearts and sometimes we can express them and many times we cannot. Help us to feel that you are with us even when we feel that we are on our own. We ask a blessing on all of the thoughts in our hearts today. There is no wrong thought. There is just truth. The truth of us in your presence, where we are deliberately placing a foot into the flowing waters of life, where we bring our true selves as we are now to be in relationship with you, the force of life itself. So we're grateful to be in a group where we can hold our thoughts close, look to others for strength, and share strength. So we say these words of thanks in the strong name of Jesus. Amen. We'll sing loving spirit, loving spirit. And keep placing leaves if you wish. We are moved by its magnificent mountains, its verdant valleys and pastoral plains. 
for the riches of our agricultural lands and for the beauty of the forest, lakes and rivers. We acknowledge the courage and sacrifice of early settlers and we celebrate the diversity of races that now call New Zealand home. We celebrate too the unique flora and fauna of this country. Forgive us when we are like rabbits, hiding in dark burrows rather than like people living in the light. Forgive us when we are like Kaka, making so much noise that we can't hear the cries of the lost or the wounded. Forgive us when we are like magpies, so busy collecting pretty possessions that we miss the wonders around us. Forgive us when we are like the inquisitive Pukeko and quick to take flight and run. Give us the grace to emulate the tranquility of sheep and cows in the shade of trees, the cheerfulness of the busy tui and the playfulness of dolphins. And give us the courage we need to be the best that we can be. Loving God, we acknowledge that we are blessed. In this land, you have given us peace and freedom. In this country, we have a society with a rich variety of people that have come from many lands. We thank you for the Church in New Zealand. We pray for the newly elected politicians as they negotiate to form a government and for all in positions of authority. We pray that they may govern work wisely and justly, so that all may live in peace and safety. And as we meet in this sacred place this morning, we pray for the needs of the whole world, for peace and goodwill all over the earth. We pray for countries ravaged by war, famine, fire or floods. We think today particularly of those in Australia, Israel, Gaza and Ukraine. Look with mercy on all whom great sorrow has come through war or tragedy. Help those who are injured and support those who are dying. Console and protect those who have lost family or friends and give light to those who despair. In a world torn apart by divisions and strife, lead all those in authority back to the way of peace, to heal what is damaged and to unite what has been torn asunder. In all lands we remember the unloved, the aged, the children, the sick in mind or body. We pray for all refugees, especially those who have been held for many years. We pray that all who deal with asylum seekers do so with compassion, respect and fairness. We pray for ourselves and for each other. And in particular today, we pray for Merle and Gary and their family as they grieve for Ray. Give us a vision for what we are capable of becoming. We ask that you transform us so that despite being ordinary people, we become capable of doing extraordinary things. Give us all the courage to affirm the values of faith, integrity and love, and to proclaim the sure and certain hope that those sacred ideas will triumph and endure. This and all our prayers we offer in the name of Jesus our Christ. Amen. Yes, we, uh, it's, uh, had I thought that I was going to um, tell you about it, I would have written some notes so that I sort of picked out the, in, perhaps the significant things. But we had a very pleasant social evening last night uh, and people uh, gave items, uh, things like that, and uh, it was all very spontaneous and um, the list of performers, you know, couldn't have been more different, really. There were uh, individuals. There was a very funny play, which the girls, the people, had been practicing for quite some time. And uh, it was all just sort of spontaneous. But I know a lot of work went in behind the scenes. And um, the main thing about it was, I suppose, the, the happiness, the, the joy. Everybody was laughing and, you know, it was, it was just one of those good, um, spontaneous uh, sort of evenings that I felt everybody had enjoyed. Uh, it went on a bit later than it was supposed to, but... Uh, you know, they're all big girls and boys now. <laughs> yes, you're allowed out. So it's okay. Thank you. And of course, we, um, we must congratulate our own version of 
Elizabeth Taylor and Richard Burton over here, the Reeds, <laughs> famous in a play directed by Mary. <laughs> Edith also performed, she didn't tell you that. Edith did perform, she did a reading. Oh. <laughs> so Nan was the professional audience. Well, that was here, thanks to you. Oh. <laughs> oh, thank you very much. Radio. Now then, Pauline, do you want to come and tell people about one of the other great religions of around here, which is the Beach Haven Garden Circle? And what you're all up to. <laughs> well, yesterday down at Beach Haven, they had a Community Connection and Sustainability Day, in which they invited local groups to come and just show off what they do. So as our garden centre, we went down there and put up a table and a gazebo and sold off about $150 worth of plants at a dollar each, so we made a bit of money. Um, but I am quite impressed with what goes on, because you know we don't live quite out in Beach Haven, so until my girls moved out that way, I wasn't always aware of what was happening out Beach Haven. But there's lots going on. There's um, the Kaipataki Eco Hub, which grows seeds and um, plants them around the, um, in public places. There's another group called the Pest Free Kaipataki, and if you don't know about them, you should do, because they give away weed killer, they give away rat poison, and the um, traps to put them in so that you're not exposing your dogs to all the poisons around the place. And they do wonderful things around the place. There's another group called Friends of Shepherd's Park, which I've never heard of, but I met some people one night, and um, one of the men came and spoke at our club, and they do all the planting around the fringes of Shepherd's Park. And if you ever walk through the bush there, it goes along by the um, stream. It is wonderful what they've done, and they are so enthusiastic. And the man who came and spoke to us, he's also involved with the replanting over on Motutapu, and that was one of his passions, to get rid of all the pests, to make the um, island pest-free, and to do all the regeneration around the place. So I'm quite impressed with all these things that are happening. And then on Wednesday last week when we had our meeting, Jenny's daughter Kate, she works for a group called Trees for Survival. It's um, a branch of the Auckland Council and she works for the council. But what they do is they go around schools, they propagate, they gather up seeds from native trees, they have about 10 different varieties, they pro propagate them um, until they're about a decent size and then they take them around to schools who spend the next nine months growing these trees to a decent size. And then they go out and they plant them on pub uh, private properties. If you have a property that has got a long way near it, that needs replanting, if you've got an area that you feel that is prone to erosion, that could need some planting, you can get in touch with this group, Trees for Survival, they're a trust, and they will send groups of school children out to replant your area, and then the schools keep an eye on the area over the coming years to make sure that the trees are doing well or replanting where the new areas need doing. So that's another very worthwhile area, that's um, a group that's doing something worthwhile to keep sustainability going in the, in the area. And our group, we're off to Rotorua, a group of us, on Thursday, there's the great Rotorua Garden Fiesta coming up. So um, a group of us have hired a minivan now. We started off with a bus, but due to, <coughs> excuse me, due to illness, a few people have had to pull out, so we're doing, going now using a minibus. So some of us won't be here for the next week at church. And also on Thursday, my other plea is, if you've got nothing to do on Thursday morning, there's something wonderful happening out there in the hall between about 9.30 and 12.30. And because four of us are not going to be around, there might be a little bit um, light on helpers. So if you've got nothing to do on Thursday morning, pop into the hall and give Rachel and Greg and Jin Sook and Gary and Robin and Linda a hand to add Kate. You can know Kate's going away too. Um, just to um, make a cup of tea, help to prepare some lunch, um, sit down and talk, play cards, 
play snacks and ladders. We've got a boy who was hooked on snacks and ladders. If anybody likes playing snacks and ladders, come and meet Thomas. <laughs> he would love it. And a couple of other people who love playing cards or help with a craft activity or just sit and have a chat. And you'll come away quite blessed because it's a wonderful morning. Isn't that girls? The girls in the back row will tell you. We go home just as blessed as they do because we really love what we do and we love meeting with all these people. So that's something for you on Thursday. And we'll be on our way to work by then. Right, we've each got a part to talk about. I'm going to talk about the overall theme. Today we talked about the story of David and Goliath. So we watched the video. That was good. And then we talked about how in the modern day uh, we each have we each our Goliath um, who uh, could be bullies or say mean things about us and how we respond like a David and how we use our own special tools to fight people uh, to fight against people who might not be so kind to us. Um, so Spencer's gonna talk first about one of the activities we did. <laughs> what activities did we do? An obstacle course. An obstacle course. Oh, oh. We faced a big obstacle and we did it in two different ways, didn't we? What did we do at first? In one gloves. The first way we had to wear all these clothes that didn't fit us properly. And we timed and so ourselves. It's the life jacket because it's mine. <laughs> And then we did it the second time with no, without the encumbering clothes. So we used our own clothes. And were we faster or slower the second time? Faster. <laughs> oh, well done. Right. Yeah. No, 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 no. And then we painted some rocks oh. with um, words on them. Yeah, so we took the stones like David had in his sling and we put words on them that we could use to help um, help us be strong and brave and kind when we're facing people who say not nice things. That's a good word. Kind. Kind. That's a good word. Kind is a good word. Okay, I need to thank you. <coughs> thank you very much. I need to say, hip, hip, hooray! Hip, hip, hooray! <laughs>
say these words together. Deep calls out to deep in every language. Deep calls out to deep in every tradition. Deep calls out to deep in every heart courageous enough to remain open whatever happens. Go with God who goes with us. And together the blessing. Ki a tau, ki a tato katoa, te atafai o to tato ariki, a ihi karaiti, me te aroha o te ato, me te fifi na tahitaka, ki te wairo taru, ake, 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 amene. <coughs> Take the word from the river and pass it to another. <laughs> Here we go. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Rosemary. Thank you, Rosemary. <laughs>